In today's video, we're going to be talking about the muscles of mastication. Now, there are four primary muscles of mastication. They are the masseter muscle, the temporalis muscle, the lateral pterygoid muscle, and the medial pterygoid muscle. There are also accessory muscles of mastication, and we'll talk about those at the end of this video. The muscles of mastication serve the purpose of working together to open and close the mouth and chew and grind food. The first muscle we're going to talk about is the masseter muscle. Its main function is to elevate the mandible. The superficial fibers of the masseter muscle protrude the mandible and the intermediate and deep fibers help to retract the mandible. The masseter muscle is rectangular in shape and it covers most of the lateral aspect of the ramus of the mandible. As I said before, it consists of three layers, the superficial layer, intermediate layer, and the deep layer. The muscle fibers of the masseter muscle originate from the inferior zygomatic arch and the anterior two-thirds of the zygomatic arch, and there is also a connection to the posterior aspect of the zygomatic bone. The fibers come together and they converge inferiorly and form a tendon that inserts at the outer surface of the mandibular ramus and the coronoid process of the mandible. The masseter muscle is innervated by the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve. It gets its blood supply from the masseteric artery, which emerges from the maxillary artery. The next muscle we're talking about is the temporalis muscle. This is a fan-shaped muscle which looks like this, and it fills the temporal fossa area. The anterior part of the muscle has fibres with vertical orientation. The mid fibres here have this oblique or diagonal orientation, and the posterior fibers have a horizontal orientation. The anterior and middle fibers help to elevate the mandible. The posterior fibers help to retract the mandible and for side to side movements. The muscle origins are from the temporal fossa to the inferior temporal line of the lateral skull. The fibers converge inferiorly and form a tendon that inserts on the coronoid process of the mandible. The temporalis muscle is innervated by the deep temporal nerve, which is a branch from the anterior division of the mandibular nerve. The blood supply of the temporalis muscle is from the deep temporal part of the maxillary artery and the middle temporal branches of the superficial temporal artery. The medial pterygoid muscle is a thick rectangular muscle, and it has a superficial head and a deep head. The deep head of the medial pterygoid is larger in size than the superficial head. The medial pterygoid muscle originates on the pterygoid process, which is this downward pointing process that extends from the sphenoid bone. The superficial head of the medial pterygoid originates from the maxillary tuberosity of the inferior maxilla, and this deep head originates from the medial surface of the lateral pterygoid plate of the sphenoid bone. The medial pterygoid muscle fibers converge together inferiorly and they form a tendon that inserts on the medial ramus of the mandible, and this is a bit more posterior and inferior to the mylohyoid groove of the mandible. The medial pterygoid muscle is innervated by a branch of the main trunk of the mandibular nerve, and its blood supply is from the pterygoid branch of the second part of the maxillary artery. The medial pterygoid muscle is responsible for assisting with the elevation of the mandible and the protrusion of the mandible. It also helps the lateral pterygoid muscle with side-to-side -side mandibular motion to help with chewing of food. The lateral pterygoid muscle is this short, thick muscle which has two heads, the upper and lower head. The upper head arises from the infratemporal surface and the infratemporal crest of the greater wing of the sphenoid bone. The lower head arises from the lateral surface of the lateral pterygoid plate of the sphenoid bone. The lateral pterygoid muscle fibers converge inferiorly and they form a tendon that inserts into the pterygoid fovea of the neck of the condylar process of the mandible. The lateral pterygoid is supplied by a branch of the anterior division of the mandibular nerve, and its blood supply comes from the pterygoid branch of the second part of the maxillary artery. The lateral pterygoid muscle is the main muscle of mastication which causes depression of the mandible, in other words, opening of the mouth. It also helps with protrusion and side-to-side -side movements of the mandible. There are also accessory muscles of mastication which are not directly involved in the motion of chewing, but they assist the main primary muscles of mastication. 
The first is the suprahyoid muscles, and these are a group of muscles which are made up of the digastric muscle, the mylohyoid muscle, and the geniohyoid muscle. They depress the mandible against resistance when the infrahyoid muscles fix or depress the hyoid bone. The infrahyoid muscles, they are made up of the omohyoid, sternohyoid, sternothyoid, and thyrohyoid muscles, and they fix or depress the hyoid bone. We also have the buccinator muscle, which is actually a muscle for facial expression, but it helps with the mastication process by keeping food pushed back within the oral cavity.